Well, good morning again, Daniel Valdez. Again, it's a pleasure and honor to talk to you. Thank you so much for joining me. Really appreciate it. We got to do a cherry on, even though cherries suck. We got to put a, uh, put a big cherry on the Texas Marching Classic, which was another fantastic contest that went down last night. Excellent stuff. We'll just go over results, scores, and uh, let's talk a little bit about the contest, and then I'll, uh, I'll get out of your way. I usually keep these... I usually keep these pretty short uh, as opposed to the the previews of the contest and stuff like that. So let's get to it. First of all, congratulations to everybody who participated at the, the uh, Kelly Reeves Athletic Complex for the Texas Marching Classic. Uh, outstanding contest from all accounts. Awesome stuff. Congratulations to the General Effect Media people. You guys crushed it with uh, interviews and photos and all sorts of fun stuff that y'all did yesterday. Excellent job. Great stuff. Let's get to it. First of all, give a big congratulations. To the back-to-back champions for the Texas Marching Classic, Vandegrift High School with an 88.888. Yes, <laughs> they're they're so good that they could even get their all the numbers just one. They could just get all the numbers correct. Um, excellent performance indeed. Uh, you're going to see, a, when I go over the scores real quick, you're going to see a lot of uh, scores that went three placements because of the judging system, because it's 40% general effect, 30% music, and 30% uh, visual. Uh, you it, that's kind of that's a residual thing that happens. You, you're just gonna you're gonna have to go three placements here, so uh, three decimal placements. So uh, uh, just be aware of that. So uh, and it makes the scores look more interesting. I mean, it's it's really a, it's really a nice comparison. So let's get let's get to it. Twelfth place, Sandra Day O'Connor was seventy five point four two five. Eleventh was Tripping Springs seventy five point seven seven five. John B Alexander in tenth with a seventy six point five seven five. Leander straight sevens across the board seventy seven point seven. Uh, Brandeis 77.875, Henny Train, Hendrickson 78.35, Rouse uh, 83.125, Round Rock with an 85.05, Cedar Park with an 87.05, Vista Ridge with an 87.075. Yes, that is basically a coin toss at that point. Uh, second place was Ronald Reagan 88.65, and then Vandegrift comes out as the champions 88.888. The cool thing about this contest is they give away uh, caption awards and finals. So uh, outstanding auxiliary or color guard, however you want to put it, Vandegrift uh, Vandegrift High School wins that. Vision Dance Company, awesome stuff, as always. Uh, Outstanding percussion went to Vista Ridge because, duh, they're awesome. (laughs) They're really good. Uh, Outstanding percussion, Vista Ridge, congratulations to them. Outstanding music went to Vandegrift. Outstanding visual went to Vista Ridge. And outstanding general effect went to Ronald Reagan. So you, the cool thing about these contests, not only do you give caption awards, but you have different programs announced. <laughs> Most of the time you have lots of different, you got a lot of variety in terms of the caption awards and whatnot. Uh, you know, you got three different schools represented here across five caption awards. So it definitely makes things a lot more interesting. That's why I love these local contests. So let's talk a little bit about the contest. Because, <laughs> I mean, I mean, you look at the list. We went over the list, and I mean, just, just heavy hitters everywhere. Let's talk a little bit about. Let's talk a little bit about expectations, not just from the con, not just going into this contest, but I mean, overall. When you're a program like Reagan, when you're a program like Vista Ridge or Cedar Park or Leander or programs that programs that have just been wildly successful over the last, I don't know, forever. When you're one of those programs, I think people don't realize looking from the outside, looking in, you don't realize how astronomical the expectations are, not just within the program, but from, from the outside as well. I mean, people talk. (laughs) So whenever whenever one of these outstanding programs gets a placement at a contest that is not indicative of what they're used to getting, it seems like the, it seems like the expectations just grow even more. It's just, it seems like people are ready to hit the panic button. And like, hey, what what happened over here? What happened at this contest? How come they did that? How come they did that? And I hear that from, I hear that from kids. I hear that from parents. I almost never hear it from staff. And the reason why is because they've got to be the ones to stay the stay the course. 
stay the course, keep it level, keep it level-headed. Because the second they freak out, it's Armageddon. So, these programs that we all know and love have these astronomically impossible expectations to live up to. The reason they're elite, the reason they're the best, the reason they're around, no matter what the contest is, no matter where you're performing, no matter what time of day it is, the reason they're the best is because they've trained their students to ignore the distractions and just work and perform. That's what the best programs in the state do consistently. And when it comes time to get that one final performance for the day, when it comes time, when the light, and we've said it a million times here, when the lights are on and it's your time and everybody, when you got 8,000, 10,000 people watching you, like the Coliseum, staring, watching you, watching your every move. When that type of pressure is on, what are you going to do? What's going to come out of your horn? How committed are you to this? Those are the questions you have to ask yourself. And these programs, like I said, they just, the expectations are so high that even if they don't live up to whatever standard they have or whatever standard people on the outside have for them, that's, that's, that's something that, that's something they kind of have to ignore. They kind of just have to, they got to work through this stuff. The reason I say that is because we saw some outstanding finals performances. There were outstanding finals performances of the Texas margin classic. And it kind of feels after talking with some members in the in the programs that competed last night, when I'm talking with some parents, a lot of programs here felt like they righted the ship. And me, I'm sitting there going, you guys, you guys were off course. I didn't know that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we didn't we didn't know that at all. But that's but those are the kinds of expectations these programs have. They're like, no, we got to fix this now. We got to get out there now and 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 crush this. Because we don't know what we don't know what the end of October is going to look like, and then it's coming up. We're I mean, we're only a couple of weeks away. You know, UIL region stuff starts this week. Area starts in, in a couple of weeks. Super regionals at the end of the month. State uh, states in states in less than a month. The season for these for many of these programs, if not all of them, is going to be over in less than a month. So there's a sense of urgency now. There's a sense of urgency like, hey, we got, we got to fix this. We got to get this right. We got to get this right. We got to perform right now. We got to do this. Sense of urgency is there, but at the same time, you can't let your mind race too much. That's why these programs are so fantastic. We saw a lot of that at Texas Marching Classic. A lot of these perform a lot of these a lot of these programs that were like, "Oh, maybe we didn't get the placement we thought we were going to get early season." Now you get the sense of like, okay, we're locked in now. Let's do this. Let's 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 do some marching band. All right, let's do some marching band stuff. So, just wanted to touch on that. Like I said, the expectations for these kids are so. It, it's it's a lot to put on a young person's shoulders, <laughs> especially when they've got a million other things to worry about besides marching band. But this is what makes this activity so great. You see that you 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 put a lot of pressure on these kids, a lot of pressure on these marching members to to achieve something as a team that that they didn't think they could achieve. But you're starting to see a lot of these elite programs start to really get it. They they start gelling together, and then when that happens, they're going to achieve things that they never thought were possible, and the audience is going to be treated to a show that they've never experienced before. So I can't wait to see all these programs again later in the season. Excellent, excellent, excellent stuff from the Texas Marching Classic. And congratulations to Cedar Ridge uh, High School, the color guard, the band boosters, everybody that was involved taking care of that contest. Excellent stuff. Well-run contest. You guys are awesome. 
I am done here. We gotta we gotta get out of here because I gotta record two more of these things for other uh, for other contests. Uh, congratulations, Texas Marching Classic. Congratulations to everybody involved, all the bands, all the finals bands, all that stuff. Great stuff indeed. I'm sure this contest will be back next year. Who knows? Maybe I'll be able to, to go there and whatnot. So uh, we'll see how that goes. I'm done here. I will talk to you all later. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Take care. Adios. Bye-bye.